Hello everyone, uh, thanks for coming here, uh, especially in the last day. Uh, my name is Kun Kuang from Tsinghua University. It's an honor to be here to present our work. As the main chimney effect in the world will differentiate the confounded energy. Uh, this is joint work with Peng Chui, Bo Li, Meng Jiang, uh, and Shi Chang Yang. First, I will give you the background before introducing the problem. Imagine that we have a data set of 1 million patients with flu. What patients will have their applications, has diagnosed, demographics, and many other features. Now we have new patients, Anna. We know Anna, uh, we know some features about Anna. We know Anna is Asia, 54 years old, has, uh, has a cold with flu. So the Anna can in and ask, ask the doctor which treatment will better cure her flu. So the, the medication A or medication B. So the doctor has to make a decision. But as a data scientist, uh, how can we help the doctor to make a right decision based on the one million patients' historical data? Okay, uh, yes, we can build an easy, uh, the naive method is to build a regression model by regressing the medication effect on the patient features and their choice of medications. With the regression model, we can easily to predict the future effects of medication A and B on patient uh, N. And there are difference to help us to make a decision which is better. But we think the correlation-based methods is not enough for decision making. The main reason is that the, the main reason is the feature dependence in the data. As we all know, uh, in the real data, the patient features such as age or gender or other features would uh, could affect the choice of a medication. That is, the medication is not independent with the patient feature in the real data. But as the correlation model, they simply assume the, uh, the, the, medication, the, uh, the choice of medication and the patient feature are independent, ignoring the feature dependence in data. Like this. So we uh, the, ignoring the uh, depend, uh, feature dependence in the correlation model, would, which, would, which would make us hard to know the real causal effects of medication and they confuse us to make a, wrong a group make a wrong decision. For example, from the historic data, we will find that for the most patients with very strong body, even though without taking any medications, their final recovery effects are very great. But for the patients with weak body, the most doctors will give them the effective medications, but we find that their final recovery effects are still very poor. So from this data, from the example, only with the correlation model, correlation analysis, we will get a wrong, uh, uh, we will get a wrong result that taking no medications would have a great recovery effect. Yeah. So uh, we, we know which is which is wrong because we know taking no medication has no any causal effect for the recovery. So we think the correlation is not enough for decision making. Actually, causal inference is a very powerful statistics model for decision making and the future uh, feature dependence was considered in the causal methods like random experiments and uh, A-B testing. Uh, the, causal inf uh, the causal inference methods, they, the uh, main idea is, is to control two groups of people with the same features but with different medications. Then we can estimate the causal effects of medication by comparing their average outcome and with the causal effects of medication we can easily to make a decision which is which medication is better for Anna. Actually, the causal effect estimation is very necessary for decision making in many fields. For example, in the uh, medical field, we need the random experiments to estimate the causal effects of new medication before it's launching. And in the social marketing, we need the testing to estimate the causal effects of a marketing strategy before to promoting it. Yeah, so. With the, uh, the causal effect estimation plays an important role on decision making. Uh, the causal effect is also called as the treatment effect, and uh, and uh, we all know the gold standard approach for treatment effect estimation are uh, random experiments like uh, like A/B testing, where different uh, where different treatments are randomly assigned to units. However, for random experiments. Uh, usually ex uh, extremely ex expensive, uh, sometimes even invisible. Nowadays, in big data L, we have a lot of uh, we have abundance of observation data. So I was thinking this the problem that how to estimate the treatment effect with only observation data in the big data scenario. 
Okay, to solve this problem, there are some existing works. The first is the propensity based methods, including inverse propensity weighting and the W bus methods. These methods need to estimate the propensity score and then they weigh the units by propensity score for confounded balancing and uh, chimney fire estimation. The shortcoming of these methods is that they need the prime knowledge for model specification for to uh, when estimate the propensity score. But we all know in the big data in the big data scenarios, we always have a large number of observed variables. We hardly to know the real model structure among these variables. So we think we cannot make any model specification during the chimney fire estimation. So some researchers seek to optimize weights for directory confounded balancing, such as entropy balancing and of course the residual balancing. The motivation behind these methods is that the confounder can be balanced by their moment, which Unicode determine the confounder's distribution. But these methods they treat all the observed variables as confounder and balance of the equally. However, in the big data L, uh, actually not all the observed variables are confounders. For example, <coughs> the variable U, which is independent with the JMS T and outcome Y, so the U is not confounder. And, with, and the different confounder would make different confounding files in data. So to estimate the chimney effects in the big data scenario, we are facing foreign challenges. The first is the unknown model structure among the variables. So we can't make any model specification. The second is the confounding, uh, confounding effects from the high dimension and noisy variables, uh, including not all of the variable confounders and uh, different confounders may contribute on your code to the confounding bias or confounding bias in data. So to address these challenges, we, pro we propose a global ECB algorithm. Uh, first, we define the average chimney effect as the mean difference between the potential outcome of units on the treated and the controlled state house. In that ball example, the treated, the treated state house could mean taking a particular medication, and the controlled state house could mean not taking any medications. Uh, here we care about the average chimney effect on the GT unit, that is the AGT, uh, uh, defined as following. From the definition, we found there is a contrafactual problem. That is, if a patient Anna has taken a particular medication, then we cannot observe the outcome when she, when, uh, when she did not take that medication. Yeah. So to solve this contrafactual problem, and uh, with considering the feature dependence in the causal framework, we propose a uh, the weighting technical for chimney fire estimation by reweighting the simple by reweighting the units with the simple weight W, which help us to make the confounded balance between treated and the control groups. Then we uh, then we can approximate the chimney facts uh, by comparing their average outcome after simple reweighting. So the key technical is to then the simple weight W. Okay. Uh, with considering that not all the observed variables as confounders, we propose a differentiated confounded balancing algorithm by simultaneously learning the confounded weights beta and the simple weights W. Where the confounded weights beta uh, determine which variable is confounder and uh, its contributions on the confounding bias in data, and the simple, bi and the simple weights are designed for the confounding balance. So the question is how to learn these weights? Okay, first, for the confounded weights learning, uh, we know in the causal framework, the general relationship between uh, among confounded x, t, and y can be represented as following from uh, where we can obtain the real chimney effect, ATT. And with the general function of x, we can find that uh, there is a bias term between the estimated ATT and the real ATT, and the bias term can be decomposed as uh, confounding bias on our observer of MK and the corresponding confounder weight. Yeah? So from the deviation, we found that if the, alpha, if the confounder weight alpha K equals zero, then the MK is not confounder. We don't we no need to balance them. And we found different confounders have different confound, confounder weights. And the surprise, we found that the confounder weight alpha K is exactly the coefficients of MK in the function of X. So we give the following proposition for confounded weights learning that uh, in observation studies, not all observed variables are confounders. And uh, different confounders may only call confounded bias on ATT with their own weight. 
and uh, we can we can then confirm the weights by the graphing potential of tau, y zero or augmented variables n. And the second for the simple weights learning, uh, we know uh, from from the Wikipedia we know any variables distribution can be uniquely determined by the connections of, of, of all its moments. Inspired by this, we propose to learn the simple weights by directly confound the balancing with the confounder's moments like bo uh, exploring, where the MT means the confounder moments on the GT groups, and the uh, MC times W means the confounder, mo confounder moments on the control groups. So with the cap of the moments, we can learn the simple weights by directly direct confounder balancing without any model specification. Uh, here is the, uh, the final object function of our differentiated confounded balancing algorithm, where the red is for uh, simple for simple ways learning by by direct confounded balancing, and the green part is for confounded ways learning by regressing Austin Y on the augmented variables n. Actually, we found that the entropy balance and the approximate residual balance algorithms are special case of our BCB algorithm by setting the confounded weights beta. As a unit, uh, unit vector. So, uh, our DCB algorithm is more generalized for extremely fast mission in the automation studies. Uh, here is the details of our algorithm. The time complexity of our algorithm is O and P, where N is the symbol size and P is the dimension of variables. Okay, next I will show the experiments. In the experiments, we check the performance of our DCB algorithm from three aspects. First, the robustness test on the high-dimensional and noisy data scenarios. Second, the accuracy test uh, on a real-world data set to estimate the prevalence, uh, to estimate the treatment fast. And the, the, third, the, the, the third is the predictive power test of our algorithm on a real online advertising application. We compare our algorithm with following methods, and the uh, variation matrix contains files as <coughs> MAE and MSE. Firstly, to test the robustness of our algorithm, we conduct extensive experiments on the synthetic data, where we can generate the high dimensional and noise data on the different uh, feature dependent settings, including the logistic and the mean success function on the treatment and uh, the linear and nonlinear function on the outcome. Here we report a small part of the results of all estimators on the linear setting. And more results are reported in our paper. From the result, we find that the direct estimator fails in all settings, since these methods they ignore the confounding bias in data. And the IPW and W robust methods make a huge error when facing the high dimension variables or the model specification are incorrect. incorrect. The entropy balance and the Boston residual balance have poor performance because they treat all the observed variables as confounder and the balance of the equally. With considering the differentiating confounders, our DCB estimator actually the best performance in the simply <coughs> estimation. Uh, here is the result on the nonlinear. Uh, from the from the result of all the settings, we find our DCB estimator actually the best performance. That means our DCB estimator is very robust for treatment fast estimation. Okay, to deeply show the robustness of our estimator, we vary the stable size, dimensional variables, confounding rates, and the confounding strings for experiments. Here we show the results when varying the dimensional variables. The x x means the dimensional variables, the y x is the mean absolute error between estimated and the, the Real German fact. Okay, from the result, we found that at the increasing of the mentioned variables, the MAE of our DCB algorithm, the, the red one, is consistent, stable, and small, while the MAE of baseline is uh, increased continuously. By varying the other three parameters, we can get the similar result. The above experiments demonstrate that our algorithm is very robust for German fast estimation. To show the accuracy of our algorithm, we experiment on a real world data set, the Lonely data set. The data contains two parts. The first part comes from a random experiment, which provides us a one choose of, of, of causal effect. And the second part uh, is the observation data, 
which help us to check the performance of all the algorithm to estimate the Kotler effect. And we conduct our experiments on the, with two experiment settings. The first is we roll. In this setting, we make confounded balance with only turn, with only turn row or so variables. And the second setting is the way interaction. In this setting, we make confounded balance with turn row or so variables and, and also consider their pairwise and the square terms. Here is the results of ATP estimation. From the result, we find the baselines that make a huge error about our DCV estimator. Actual best performance compared with baseline. The main reason is the main reason is all this algorithm consider the consider bring uh, consider differentiate differentiating confounders for a better confounder balance and make a accurate uh, terminal estimation. And we also found that under the way interaction setting, we get a better terminal estimation than the way row. Which means that with considering the high order terms in the, of the observed variables, our algorithm can make a better confounded balance and make a better performance on the training estimation. Here we also show the confounder, confounder weight ranking under the VRO settings. A real VRO setting. From the table, we know the confounder earnings and allocation status highly affect the training effect, but the BRAC or and the his penny has few effects. Okay, to show the power of our algorithm, we conduct the experiments on a real online hiding data set. The data set contains uh, more than 100,000 student feedback with like and dislike. And for each user, we have 56 features like age, gender, number of friends, and so on. And uh, in our experiment, we set the user feedback as outcome and the alternatively estimate the causal effects of each user feature on, the, on their behaviors. And finally, we select the top K feature with high causal effect to predict their final behaviors. Here is the result of prediction. From the result, we found that our DCV algorithm actually the best performance uh, on, the, on the prediction. The main reason is that with considering, with differentiating the confounders, our algorithm can estimate the causal effects of each user feature more precise by better confounded balancing. Okay, we also compare our algorithm with, the, with two classical correlation-based methods, the MRER and MRMR. From the result, the performance of the correlation-based methods are worse than our, uh, our DCV algorithm and even worse than the other causal baselines, which means the Treatment effect estimation, the causal methods can significantly help to improve the prediction performance. So here we give a conclusion. In this work, we focus on how to estimate the treatment effect more precisely with high dimension of the data in the world. Specifically, we adjust the new challenges of estimating treatment effect in the big data scenarios and propose a lower differentiated confounder balancing algorithm for for treatment defense estimation, the extensive experiments show that our DCV algorithm can estimate the treatment effect more accurately on both synthetic and real world data sets. So here's the main reference, and uh, thanks. Any question?